Stephen Freeman was a young man in his mid-twenties, known for his kind and easygoing nature. Born and raised in Griffin, Georgia, Stephen was the kind of person who could light up a room with his smile. He was well-liked in his community, where he had deep roots and strong connections. Stephen was the youngest of three siblings, and his family adored him for his warmth, generosity, and unwavering loyalty. His friends often described him as the one they could always count on, whether it was for a late-night chat or helping out in times of need. Stephen's compassionate spirit and genuine care for others made him a beloved figure in his social circle, where he was often the glue that held friendships together. Mary Catherine Higdon, also in her mid-twenties, shared a similar small-town background. Raised in Griffin, she was known as a caring and dedicated individual. Friends and family often noted her strong will and determination, traits that defined much of her personality. Mary Catherine had a nurturing side, often stepping in to help those she loved, but she also had a complexity that made her enigmatic to those around her. Her upbringing was stable, and she was seen as someone who was grounded in her values and beliefs. Stephen and Mary Catherine met during their high school years, where their relationship began as a typical teenage romance. They quickly became inseparable, and what started as a high school fling blossomed into a serious relationship. Their bond grew stronger as they navigated the challenges of young adulthood together. To those around them, Stephen and Mary Catherine seemed like the perfect match, a couple who had found love early and were committed to building a life together. However, as with many relationships, there were layers beneath the surface that few could see, setting the stage for the tragic events that would later unfold. Stephen Freeman and Mary Catherine Higdon's relationship spanned several years, beginning in their teenage years, and evolving into a serious, long-term commitment. What started as a high school romance quickly deepened, with the couple becoming almost inseparable. They experienced the typical milestones of young love, proms, first jobs, and graduation, each event further solidifying their bond. After high school, their relationship continued to flourish as they navigated the challenges of early adulthood together. Eventually, they decided to move in together, a significant step that signaled their intent to build a future as a couple. Their shared interests played a crucial role in their relationship. Both were avid fans of outdoor activities, often spending weekends hiking, fishing, or just enjoying nature. These shared experiences strengthened their connection, allowing them to create lasting memories together. Additionally, they both valued family and maintained close ties with their respective families, frequently attending family gatherings and celebrations together. This common ground reinforced their commitment to one another and suggested a promising future. However, like any long-term relationship, theirs was not without its difficulties. Over the years, they faced various challenges, including financial pressures, differences in life goals, and the natural growing pains that come with transitioning from adolescence to adulthood. Despite these issues, they remained committed to each other, often working through their problems with a level of maturity that belied their age. Yet, underlying tensions were beginning to surface, hinting at deeper issues that would later come to light. To the outside world, Stephen and Mary Catherine appeared to be the quintessential young couple. They were often seen together at local events, hand in hand, presenting an image of a loving and devoted partnership. Friends and family viewed them as a solid couple, one that had withstood the test of time and the challenges of young adulthood. Their social media profiles were filled with pictures of happy moments, vacations, holidays, and everyday life, further reinforcing the perception that they were on a steady path towards a bright future. However, beneath this veneer of normalcy, there were cracks in their relationship that few outsiders could see. The couple's arguments, once occasional, had become more frequent and intense, fueled by unresolved issues and growing frustrations. These private struggles were carefully concealed from those around them, as both Stephen and Mary Catherine were determined to maintain the appearance of a strong, unified couple. But as the pressures mounted, the disparity between their public image and their private reality grew wider, setting the stage for the tragic events that would ultimately unfold. In the months leading up to August 1, 2018, the relationship between Stephen Freeman and Mary Catherine Higdon had become increasingly strained. The initial excitement and warmth that characterized their early years together had gradually been replaced by tension and frustration. Friends and family members began to notice subtle changes in both of them. 
Stephen, once known for his easygoing nature, seemed more withdrawn and less eager to participate in social activities. He confided to close friends that the relationship had become more challenging, but he rarely elaborated on the specifics, often downplaying the seriousness of their issues. Mary Catherine, on the other hand, exhibited signs of growing agitation. Once known for her nurturing and caring demeanor, she had become more irritable and prone to mood swings. Those close to her observed that she seemed preoccupied, often lost in thought, or quick to anger over small matters. The couple's arguments, which had previously been private and infrequent, started becoming more noticeable. Neighbors reported hearing raised voices coming from their home on multiple occasions, and some of their friends were beginning to express concern about the state of their relationship. Underlying much of this tension were issues that had been simmering for some time. Financial stress was a significant factor, as the couple struggled to manage their expenses while trying to maintain a certain lifestyle. Additionally, there were whispers of infidelity and trust issues, though neither Stephen nor Mary Catherine ever openly discussed these matters with anyone outside their closest circle. As the pressure mounted, their relationship began to fray at the edges, with each passing day bringing them closer to a breaking point. August 1st, 2018 began like any other day for Stephen and Mary Catherine. The couple spent the day together at their home in Griffin, Georgia. On the surface, it seemed like an ordinary day, but there was an undercurrent of tension that neither could fully escape. They engaged in their usual routines, preparing meals, watching television, and taking care of household chores. However, there was an unmistakable strain in their interactions. Conversations that should have been light and casual were tinged with irritation, and simple tasks seemed to take on an air of discomfort. As the day progressed, the tension between them grew more palpable. A disagreement, which may have started over something trivial, escalated into a full-blown argument. The exact details of this argument remain unclear, but it was intense enough that it left both of them emotionally charged. The atmosphere in the house became increasingly volatile, with both Stephen and Mary Catherine feeling the weight of their unresolved issues bearing down on them. By the evening, the situation had reached a critical point. In a moment of heightened emotion, the argument took a tragic turn. Mary Catherine, who had been handling a firearm in their home, claimed that the gun accidentally discharged, striking Stephen in the chest. The shock and horror of what had just occurred sent Mary Catherine into a panic. She immediately called 911, her voice frantic as she reported the shooting. Despite her desperate efforts to get help, it was too late. Stephen Freeman was pronounced dead at the scene. The day that began like any other had ended in unimaginable tragedy. What had once been a loving relationship had culminated in a devastating loss, leaving a community in shock and setting the stage for a complex and heartbreaking legal battle. As soon as the police arrived at the scene on the night of August 1, 2018, the investigation into Stephen Freeman's death began in earnest. The initial call from Mary Catherine Higdon described the shooting as an accident, but investigators were trained to scrutinize every detail, especially in cases involving firearms. The crime scene was carefully secured and forensic experts began their meticulous examination. The firearm in question was a pistol that belonged to Mary Catherine, Investigators first examined the gun to determine if there was any evidence of a malfunction that could support her claim of an accidental discharge. However, the gun was found to be in perfect working order, with no signs of a misfire or mechanical failure. This initial finding raised the first red flag, as it contradicted the narrative of an accidental shooting. Next, forensic experts analyzed the bullet trajectory, which would provide critical insight into how the shooting occurred. The bullet had entered Stephen's chest at a downward angle, a detail that suggested he was either sitting or lying down at the time he was shot, or that the shooter was standing above him. This trajectory did not align with Mary Catherine's statement that the gun went off accidentally while she was handling it. Instead, it hinted at a more deliberate action, causing investigators to question whether the shooting was truly unintentional. Moreover, the absence of gunpowder residue on Mary Catherine's hands and the proximity of the shot suggested that she had fired the gun from a close distance, further complicating her story. The crime scene investigators also noted the lack of any signs of a struggle, which would have been expected if the shooting had been accidental, or if there had been a physical altercation leading up to it. 
The autopsy of Stephen Freeman provided even more damning evidence that contradicted Mary Catherine's account of the events. The medical examiner determined that the bullet wound was inflicted at close range, and the trajectory confirmed the findings of the forensic team. The pathologist's report also noted that the angle and placement of the wound were inconsistent with an accidental discharge, as described by Mary Catherine. Additionally, the autopsy revealed no defensive wounds on Stephen's body, suggesting that he had not been anticipating an attack, nor had he tried to shield himself. This further undermined the theory of an accidental shooting, as it indicated that Stephen had been caught completely off guard, possibly unaware that he was in immediate danger. The toxicology report showed no substances in his system that could have impaired his ability to react, reinforcing the idea that he was simply in a vulnerable position when the shot was fired. These autopsy findings were pivotal in the investigation, shifting the focus from a tragic accident to a possible intentional act of violence. The combination of forensic evidence and the medical examiner's conclusions painted a picture that was increasingly at odds with Mary Catherine's story, leading investigators to suspect that there was much more to the case than initially met the eye. With the evidence mounting, law enforcement prepared to take the next critical step in the investigation. On the basis of the forensic and autopsy evidence, along with inconsistencies in Mary Catherine Higdon's account of the shooting, the authorities decided to charge her with multiple offenses. On August 2nd, 2018, just one day after the incident, Mary Catherine was arrested and charged with malice murder, felony murder, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. The charge of malice murder indicated that prosecutors believed she had acted with intent to kill, rather than the shooting being a tragic accident as she had claimed. The legal implications of these charges were severe. If convicted of malice murder, Mary Catherine faced the possibility of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. The charges of felony murder and possession of a firearm during a felony only compounded the seriousness of her situation, suggesting that the prosecution was building a case for premeditated action rather than a spur-of-the-moment tragedy. The news of Mary Catherine's arrest sent shockwaves through the community. Griffin, Georgia, was a small town where everyone knew each other, and the idea that such a horrific event could happen within their close-knit community was hard to comprehend. For many, the image of Mary Catherine as a sweet, caring young woman clashed violently with the charges against her. Those who knew her struggled to reconcile the person they thought they knew with the accusations she now faced. Supporters of Mary Catherine expressed disbelief, with some arguing that the charges were too harsh and insisting that the shooting must have been an accident. They pointed to her clean record and the seemingly loving relationship she had with Stephen as evidence that she couldn't have intentionally harmed him. On the other hand, Stephen's family and close friends were devastated. For them, the arrest brought a sense of validation that justice might be served, but it also deepened their grief. The idea that someone they had welcomed into their lives and who had shared so many moments with Stephen could be responsible for his death was nearly unbearable. Their sorrow was compounded by anger and a desire for answers, answers that they hoped the legal system would eventually provide. Mary Catherine Higdon's defense team faced a daunting task. From the outset, they focused on portraying the shooting as a tragic accident rather than a deliberate act of violence. Her lawyers argued that the gun discharged unintentionally, emphasizing that Mary Catherine had no history of violence and no clear motive to harm Stephen Freeman, the man she had loved for years. They presented Mary Catherine as a deeply emotional and distressed individual who was devastated by the loss of her partner and the events that led to his death. To support their case, the defense highlighted Mary Catherine's emotional state during and after the shooting. They argued that she was overwhelmed by fear and confusion, which explained her inconsistent statements to the police. The defense also called character witnesses who testified to her good nature and stable past painting a picture of a woman who had always been kind, responsible, and incapable of intentional harm. In addition to her emotional state, the defense pointed out the lack of a clear motive. They suggested that any tensions in the relationship were typical of young couples and did not point to premeditated murder. Furthermore, the defense questioned the reliability of the forensic evidence, suggesting that the circumstances of the shooting could still be consistent with an accidental discharge, despite the prosecution's claims. 
The prosecution, however, presented a starkly different narrative. They argued that the shooting was far from accidental and was, in fact, the culmination of a tumultuous and increasingly hostile relationship. The prosecution contended that Mary Catherine had grown resentful and angry toward Stephen, leading her to commit the act with intent. To support their case, the prosecution brought forward a wealth of evidence. They focused heavily on the forensic analysis, which suggested that the gun had been fired deliberately, and the trajectory of the bullet indicated a close-range shot that was unlikely to have been accidental. They also pointed to the autopsy findings, which showed that Stephen was in a vulnerable position when he was shot, further challenging the idea that the shooting was a mere accident. Moreover, the prosecution introduced damning evidence in the form of text messages exchanged between Stephen and Mary Catherine in the weeks leading up to the shooting. These messages revealed a relationship fraught with tension, jealousy, and occasional threats, painting a picture of a relationship on the brink. The prosecution argued that these texts demonstrated Mary Catherine's growing frustration and emotional instability, which ultimately led her to take drastic action. One particularly telling exchange occurred just weeks before the shooting, where Mary Catherine sent a message to Stephen hinting at feeling betrayed and abandoned. Her words carried a tone of desperation and anger, suggesting that she was struggling to cope with the state of their relationship. The prosecution used these messages to argue that Mary Catherine's emotions had reached a boiling point, leading her to take drastic action on the night of the shooting. The jury was left to consider whether these texts were evidence of a woman pushed to her breaking point or simply the venting of a frustrated partner. The testimonies provided by witnesses during the trial further illuminated the complex dynamics of Stephen and Mary Catherine's relationship. Some witnesses described seeing Stephen withdraw from social activities which they attributed to the stress of his relationship with Mary Catherine. Family members also testified, offering insights into the private lives of Stephen and Mary Catherine. Stephen's family painted a picture of a young man who was increasingly unhappy and conflicted about his relationship but remained committed out of a sense of loyalty and love. They spoke of his growing frustration and the toll it was taking on his well-being. On the other hand, Mary Catherine's family and friends testified to her emotional struggles. They described her as someone who had always been deeply invested in her relationship with Stephen, perhaps to the point of losing herself in it. Some of her friends mentioned that she had expressed fears about the relationship falling apart and that she was desperate to hold on to what they had. The testimonies also revealed instances of previous altercations between the couple. Witnesses recalled occasions where arguments had escalated to the point where others had to intervene. These incidents, while not necessarily violent, suggested a pattern of escalating tension that supported the prosecution's narrative of a relationship on the verge of collapse. The combined weight of the text messages and witness testimonies created a complex picture for the jury to consider. They were tasked with determining whether the evidence pointed to an intentional act of violence or a tragic accident fueled by emotional turmoil. Each piece of evidence added to the puzzle, ultimately guiding the jury toward their final verdict. The trial of Mary Catherine Higdon was a highly charged and emotional affair that captivated the community of Griffin, Georgia. The courtroom was tense, with both families and a significant number of locals attending each session, eager to see justice served or to support Mary Catherine in what many still believed was a tragic accident. The prosecution and defense presented their cases over several weeks, each side determined to sway the jury with compelling evidence and persuasive arguments. The prosecution emphasized the downward trajectory of the couple's relationship and the cold, calculated nature of the shooting, suggesting that Mary Catherine had acted out of anger and frustration. Key moments included the presentation of the bullet trajectory and the lack of any defensive wounds on Stephen, which the prosecution argued were inconsistent with an accidental shooting. After several days of deliberation, the jury reached a verdict that left the courtroom in a state of mixed emotions. Mary Catherine Higdon was found not guilty of malice murder, a charge that would have required the jury to believe she acted with intent to kill. However, she was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, indicating that while the jury did not believe she intended to kill Stephen, they did find that her actions were reckless and resulted in his death. The not guilty verdict on the charge of malice murder was likely due to the defense's portrayal of Mary Catherine's emotional state and the lack of a clear motive for intentional murder. 
The jury may have been swayed by the evidence suggesting that the shooting, while reckless, was not premeditated. However, the guilty verdict for involuntary manslaughter reflected the jury's belief that Mary Catherine bore responsibility for Stephen's death, even if it was not intentional. The sentencing phase of the trial was another emotionally charged chapter in the saga. The judge, taking into account the jury's verdict and the circumstances of the case, sentenced Mary Catherine Higdon to 15 years in prison, with the possibility of parole after serving a portion of her sentence. The judge's comments during sentencing were stern but measured, acknowledging the tragedy of Stephen Freeman's death, while also considering Mary Catherine's lack of prior criminal history and the complex emotions involved in the case. In addition to her prison sentence, Mary Catherine was also ordered to undergo counseling and participate in rehabilitation programs aimed at addressing the emotional and psychological issues that may have contributed to the incident. The judge expressed hope that these measures would help prevent any future tragedies and aid in Mary Catherine's eventual reintegration into society. The case of Mary Catherine Higdon and Stephen Freeman garnered significant media attention. The media coverage focused not only on the courtroom drama, but also on the broader issues the case highlighted, such as domestic violence, gun safety, and the complexities of intimate relationships. For the families involved, the legacy of this case is one of profound loss and the struggle to find healing in the aftermath. For the wider community, it serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of communication, understanding, and intervention in preventing